Okay. We're back. We're live. <clears throat> Thank you all for being here. This is Verdi Busto of the Schumann Resonance Harmonics channel. This is Thursday, the 3rd of uh, September already, 2020, the year we all see things clearly, whether we want, whether we want to or not. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, uh, thank you all for your love and support. Um, thank you all for your continued um, um, wonderful support. Um, all right, so uh, primarily we're talking about the subject that we're talking about continued from part one, right where we left off was a continuation of the technology of the Tomsk, S, Tomsk Russia SOS, the Space Observing System, uh, data acquisition uh, system. So we're, we're looking for information specifically from Tomsk on their, their equipment. Okay. However, in lieu of that, what, what I'm, I'm doing is taking people... Oh, it's a moving picture now. Um, uh, so taking people through the literature that I can find on the uh, Schumann antennas with the accompanying uh, front end, uh, the, the, the reporting equipment, uh, the computer, and et cetera, et cetera. So I've already um, introduced, um, there's a, there was a, a conference in part one, there was a conference given uh, on the, um, from the people at Tomsk, uh, uh, at a symposium, this conference, twenty-three, I think it was. All right. So, um, so, uh, so, just by way of an introduction to the um, what it what it takes to acquire the signal, uh, I want to also introduce another paper here, which I think is uh, equally important for beginners as we talk about you know the Schumann resonances. So, some of this may be basic information that people know. Uh, but when we're talking about the resonances, I, I believe it's really important to uh, always keep... I, I keep seeing new... I have new subscribers. Okay. So here, and I may, make reference to this over at the Facebook as well. I post these these videos at um, the Facebook channel as well. Um, so from there, I get... You know, I get subscribers every day. I get at least one or two subscribers between here and there. All right, so I'm always getting new people, and frequently, as I I make comments over like Reddit or what other forums, um, I I make reference to these videos. So I often have to kind of re go over a lot of basic stuff for the benefit of the newcomers to kind of catch them up, sort of do a crash course in some of these things. So. Um, this particular one here is a, a basic, that's why I like this, I love these, a lot of these ones here that are basic information before they start going into some stupid equation, or math bullshit or whatever, some, all those symbols. Uh, they start talking about, you know, some basic stuff. Uh, they give a few paragraphs of, of introduction of what, you know, the, 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 the human resonance is, you know, just, again, as a refresher course for those who are new here. All right. So, um, in the interests of doing that, um, I'm going to present this ResearchGate.net article, um, which um, the title is Recent Studies on Schumann Resonance. Okay, this is January 2006, IEEJ, Transcriptions on Fundamentals and Materials, uh, Volume 126, Number 1, Pages 28 to 30. Uh, and this is from... Yoshiaki Ando at the University of Electrocom something and this is Masashi Hayakawa I probably butchered the name uh, from the same University of Electrocom dealy deal All right. so it says recent studies on human resonance natural electromagnetic resonance in the earth ionosphere shell cavity are summarily uh, summarized briefly okay and then it says an example of the spectrum the human that's a figure that they they will present later and lower all right, all right. so <clears throat> and uh, both of these names i've seen before i recognize uh ando and hayakawa 
uh, I have to say. There, there, there are people, other people have, research, have cited their work uh, that, I, that I've read. I've read people who have cited their, their work. Right? So the title is... Recent studies on Schumann resonance, or as you were, uh, from Ando and Hayakawa, University of uh, This is accepted version of the article. Why Ando? Okay. Uh, so the abstract says uh, recent studies on Schumann resonance, natural electromagnetic resonance in the Earth ionosphere shell cavity, as summarized briefly. Keywords: Schumann resonance, comma ELF transient, comma lightning activity. Okay, one. Physics of Schumann resonance. Uh, oh, we're going to get to the fun part here. That's the where well, the fun begins. All right. Damn! Oh, shot past it. There we go. Right. Physics of Schumann resonance. The spherical shell region between the Earth's surface and the lower boundary of the ionosphere forms a dissipative electromagnetic resonator in the extremely low frequency ELF range. And the resonance is excited by worldwide lightning strokes on electromagnetic noise oh, on the ground. Sorry, one. It is called Schumann resonance, which is the dominant part of natural electromagnetic noise in 5 to 50 hertz. The resonant frequencies are about 8, 14, 20, 24 hertz, dot, 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 hertz, and 8 is the lowest one. The loss of the resonance is caused by collision of ionized particles and electrons accelerated by electric fields with other ionized ones and neutrals in the lower atmosphere. Our group has measured the Schumann resonance for the last six years and a typical example of the spectrum is shown in figure one. The Schumann resonance spectrum, figure one, that you saw part of, was measured by induction coil magnetometers with magnetic cores. The important components of electromagnetic fields of Schumann resonance are the horizontal components of the magnetic field and the vertical component of the electric field taking into consideration that the measurement is performed on the Earth's ground with relatively high con conductivity. For the measurement... Let me scroll up. Okay. All right, so it says... The important pump components of electromagnetic fields of Schumann resonance are the horizontal components of the magnetic field and the vertical components of the electric field, taking into consideration that the measurement is performed on the Earth's ground with relatively high conductivity. For the measurement, quiet electromagnetic environment is necessary to avoid the noise generated by human activity, and rural areas are preferable for the observation site, example, at, I, at our observation site, Moshiri, the intensity of noise radiated from commercial power supply system is less than 0.4 nanotesla peak to peak. For the, for the detection of the magnetic fields in the Schumann resonance band, it is appropriate to use an induction coil because of their enough sensitivity as okay, just making sure I'm where I'm supposed to be uh, sensitivity as well as low noise characteristics for the measurement of the vertical electric field capacitive antennas are handy and compact the antennas comprise of insulated can this is translated <laughs> at the height of several meters above the ground. The details on the Schumann resonance measurement are described in the literature. All right, so if you made it through with me on that, this is a basic description of, of how they get the, um, this, the, the signal. All right, so I just, what we're, we're acquiring, we're, we are acclimating ourselves to the data acquisition of the Schumann resonances. 
uh, before we can talk about what's wrong with the data, again, it's important to know more about the antenna and the system it takes to get the data. Okay. If I knew exactly what was wrong with, with, with Tom's uh, system, I would go there to the website and look it up and show you. However, in lieu of that, the next best thing is to sh give you the basic introduction of what can go wrong in the many, many, many links to the, um, to the system here. Okay. All right, so Schumann resonance spectra vary hourly, and the variation depends upon mostly on the location of the source lightnings. Okay, so what it's saying there is the distance from the source of of these detector detectors makes the difference in how obviously how it's going to. Um, uh, it's going to affect the um, the Schumann the Schumann resonance meters. The 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 proximity to lightning is going to give you a different reading than if it's coming from the rest of the globe. So again, locate location matters. When you're looking at this, it's important to know the difference between the local and the uh, the worldwide. You know what's coming from the local environment versus the uh, is this a real actual thing that's happening on on the world theater uh, if you understand what i'm saying all right so i've mentioned this before the the biggest uh, to me I, in my honest humble opinion the biggest motivation to doing this is to to introduce people to the idea that 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 there there is a difference between what's happening on the meters what the meters show and, and what may be happening in your neighborhood, your neck of the woods. Okay, so what's local and what's distant. There we go. All right. Um, Schumann, and, and it's also important, again, to, to know the variations in the, 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 uh, of the times. You've got to look at the times of the Schumann resonance uh, charts or graphs to make any kind of an assessment of what's going on. And you've got to look at these things day by day by day by day. You know, all right. Schumann resonance spectra are very hourly, and the variation depends up mostly on the location of the source lightnings. The variation in characteristics of the propagation media, i.e., the atmosphere, may cause potentially the change of the Schumann spectra, but the effect is much smaller than the source location. For example, the very intense ray burst GRB event occurred on 27 August 1998 but there was no significant difference between the spectrum during the event and the typical ones although very low frequency VLF signals were strongly disturbed for. It is difficult in the observation to evaluate quantitatively the effect of the variation in the atmosphere in the ionospheric height because of the uncertainty of the source distribution. But the Schumann resonance spectra would not be perturbed clearly unless some parameters change over the entire globe, which is deduced from the fact that a Schumann spectrum is the synthesis of responses of many lightning sources with many propagation paths. <laughs> Another interesting phenomena in the Schumann resonance band is the transient signal originated by huge lightning strokes, which may produce the mesospheric luminance, such as sprites, and the signal is called the ELF transient. Some of recent studies on ELF transient are also addressed in this paper. <clears throat> Theoretical studies of Schumann resonance. Originally, the study on Schumann resonances started from a theoretical prediction by Schumann in 1952. Then, many approaches were re reported in 1960s and 70s, and the most of them were based 
on the layer modeling and on the equivalent propa propagation constant. And the literatures are found in the reference book by Nicol... Oh, I'm going to butcher this guy's name. Nicol Lineko and Hayakawa. The most of these approaches are formulated in the frequency domain, but Nikolayenko developed a technique to accelerate the convergence appearing in the inverse Fourier transform to obtain the time domain solution. Mushtak and Williams summarized the proposed layer models in the validity. Okay. All right, where are we? Okay, so this is the chart they're talking about in you see a spike at 60, a continuous tone at 60 there. Okay, we've talked about that before. All right. Next paragraph. Recently, with the rapid growth of computational resources, Numerical assimilation of Schumann resonance has been reported by some groups. In 2003, Morente et al. reported the computation by the transmission line matrix TLM method, and since 2002, the ELF propagation has been computed by using the finite difference time domain F. DTD method, uh, sites 8, 9, 10, 11, and improved by using hexagonal cells. Okay. And it says an example of the Schumann, oh, an example of the spectrum of Schumann resonance. The first resonant peak is observed at about 8 hertz. The data were collected at Moshiri, Hokkaido, Japan. I give the uh, coordinates 40 degrees 20 minutes north, 142 degrees 15 minutes east, at 1800 UT on 15 August 2004. The discrete response at 50 hertz is the noise radiated from the commercial power supply unit. Okay. Ando et al. Have, have presented the simulation by the finite difference method in the frequency domain and have introduced much more realistic parameters in the lower ionosphere, 1314, by using IRI 2000, NRL, MSIS, EOO models, Empirical models of atmospheric and ionospheric density, composition, and temperature. The average, oh, I'm sorry, it says the advantage of numerical methods is the capability to study arbitrary configuration, and it would clearly appear for analysis in such natural electromagnetic phenomena if the preciseness is more required, which must become essential with the development of studies. Therefore, many researchers in this ELF study should pay more attention to numerical methods. Pay more attention to numerical methods. There, however, exist some disadvantages, the main of which is the composition of computational resources. The difficulty may be avoided by the choice of methods. For example, it is more appropriate to calculate Schumann resonances by using the frequency domain method and the time domain... Oh, that's nice. Good shot of my end. All right, so you're following along, hopefully, in words. For example, it is more appropriate to calculate Schumann resonances by using the frequency domain method and the time domain analysis is useful to stimulate the ELF transient uh, propagation. All right. All right, so this is a lot more than what is 
hopefully I don't get thumbs down for <laughs> going off topic here. But this is a lot more than um, just talking about uh, the. Um, this is not just talking about the, the 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 signal itself, but it's talking about the data acquisition of how how they get the signal itself and some of the um, the problems with facing getting a good clear signal. You know, lightning propagation is talking about, again, go, go and read this yourself so you can get, I'm just introducing this. Um, I'm, I'm kind of making my way through this um, right now as I'm going through this. Uh, um, I kind of scanned it once and I'm actually reading through this right now. So, um, so thank you all for bearing with me as I'm kind of interpreting what it's saying there in the article. Um, but basically, they're talking about, again, the diurnal difference and variation between the time and the date. Um, between the, talking about some of the hardware, they're talking about um, some of the basic um, uh, um, conditions, like the ELFs and the, the, the altitude of the ionosphere and what's happening up and above, uh, up and above us you know, like 80 kilometers or more in the range of where the sprites and the elves and the red, the blue jets, above the blue jets are the red uh, um, elves and, and these kind of things, the sprites. So, um, so this is a consideration when getting the Schumann signal. All right, so now they're, they go into lightning distribution, the same thing as the other one did uh, in part one. Uh, this was just an introduction of some of the 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 um, uh, some of the problems facing the 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 Schumann resonance uh, harmonics data. Okay. So the main article that I had wanted to get to was this one here. Okay. This one gives. This is the uh, from Springer Open. This is um, the website will be. Uh, the, the, the link will be in the description. Okay, so in this particular um, this particular article um, I'm going to introduce it I, and I've said this before I really like this article because one of the reasons is they don't go much into the equations at first. They give a basic, uh, you know, kind of a, um, it's more of a, a, a general description of what they're doing and, and, and they, they go into the, the equations and the hardcore uh, abstracted logic, math, symbol stuff um, later on. So, um, so I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to uh, just introduce this and, and get into part three because I did bring up three different articles and so I think it's fair to give, you know, one half hour dedicated show to each particular article. So I'm not going to go into too much depth about this one right now. Um, uh, I think I need a music break and a, maybe a smoke break, I don't know. Um, but uh, I'm going to kind of um, just introduce this and then fade to music and then let, let it run out of time. <laughs> I think I've gotten compliments about the music and, and I kind of like Aaron's mixes and he, he's the lighted DJ. Oh, you know what? Maybe in the next video I'll show you who the DJ is and give an introduction with his music that way. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, it's a thing. I'll think about it. I'll, I'll, I'll hunt down this video. All right, anyway, um, so on with the show. All right, so uh, this is um, from the article. Uh, it's from uh, Eurosip, and speaking of that, I'm going to take actually a one-minute uh, sip break. Speaking of music. Tell me that your love will go away I need you 
Nice. All right, I'm back more or less. All right, so <clears throat> this is the new portable ELF Schumann resonance receiver design and detailed analysis of the antenna in the analog front end. Okay, and so this is by uh, Constantin. Okay, this, this is um, Constantinos Ivotis. He's from the Electric Communications and Applications Lab Physics Department, University of Ionina, I think. Ionina, Greece. Okay. So this is from the guy from Greece. Okay. Talking about the Schumann resonances. Okay. So we're going to learn quite a bit about the, um, the complexity of the system with the Schumann resonances from this article uh, at the uh, Springer Open. Okay. okay, I'm going to introduce the article and then I'm going to fit out with music. All right. I'm just, so I'm just going to read the abstract here to this, which is just one paragraph. I think we can handle one paragraph. <laughs> at least I can, at least reading. I'm talking about me. Uh, these, these, I have to read these things and, and make it digestible takes a bit from me, just I want you all to know. All right, um, abstract. Abstract. All right, abstract. Schumann, Schumann resonance. Schumann resonance oscillation detection is a complex procedure which requires customized and high quality measurement systems. The primary objective of this work was to design and implement a standalone portable and low cost receiver able to measure as much Schumann resonance harmonics as possible. Design as well as detailed analysis of the efficient induction coil magnetic antenna and the low noise amplifying filtering chain is presented. The detection system includes two coils back to back, resulting in a total coil length of 60 kilometers. The filtering and amplification chain exhibits a spur experimentally measured total bandpass gain equal to 112 decibels at 10 hertz and as low as 2.88 nanovolts over the square root of a hertz equivalent noise input noise. In order to validate the new portable ELF Schumann resonance detecting detection and monitoring system, we took measurements at various spots relatively free from man-made electromagnetic pollution. Results have shown very clearly Schumann resonance peaks for the first six modes with 10 minute acquisition time. Okay. All right. So one of the things that, that, that he's talking about there. All right. I'm introducing this concept, concept of the data stripes. Okay. So as you look at the repeating pattern of those stripes, those are essentially like the, the 10 minute, here it shows you 10 minute uh, intervals. And so in the literature, maybe here in one of the other ones, it talks about how many samples they're taking per minute or per hour or per second or whatever it is. So the sample rate is how many times they're doing like a sweep or a check or a sensor update. I think this is the best way to put it. Uh, that it's giving a signal. So there's a repeater function somewhere in there in this equipment that it, it, it sends a signal out, you know, a request for data. You know, the software sends a request for data 
uh, asking for, you know, we need something to send to the home office. So the satellite, as it were, quote unquote, which is the, the antenna, is always looking for a signal. Okay. That's sort of what, what this is telling you. And so one of the things he's talking about is the acquisition of the signal. And he's talking about the two coils back to back and the resulting length of the, the coil. Okay. He's talking about um, the low noise amplifying filtering chain. All right. So that's a, that's a word for you, to, a phrase to wrap your head around. Uh, low noise filter, right? Uh, amplifying filter chain, right? So where we talk about uh, the spikes, we just saw in the last diagram, uh, part two, I think it was, in the last article,